Hello again. Today we're going to be looking at another exciting topic in biology. Um, but before we go into this exciting topic in biology, I'd like to ask probably a question. What do you think affects the cost of production in agriculture? You know, the cost of production has to do with um, the amount of uh, money or resources a uh, farmer puts in to get agricultural products. So what do you think affects this cost of production in terms of increasing the cost of production or reducing the cost of production? Of course, you know, if the cost of production is increased, that means that um, the, 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 the um, cost of each product will also increase in the market. So what actually causes this increase or what actually brings about the decrease in cost of production? What do you think affects the cost of production in agriculture? Now, to answer this particular question, I believe that one of the major factors that bring about, or let me give you, okay, one of the major factors that brings about um, an increase probably in the cost of production is pest. Pest. Another factor that also brings about an increase or affects the cost of production is diseases. You know, plants and animals, most of well, when we're talking about agriculture, it includes the cultivation of um, crops and also the rearing of what? Animals. So um, 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 diseases can also affect the cost of product producing or uh, cultivating um, crops and also the cost of rearing animals. And also pests can also cause or an effect or increase the cost of um, cultivating crops and also rearing of animals. So these two factors poses a bigger threat to the cost of production. And based on this, we are going to be discussing today pests and diseases of agricultural importance. Pests and diseases of agricultural importance. But for today's topic or for today's class, we will be looking just at the effect of pests. We're going to talk about pests in general. We're going to look into details about pests. Now, looking at it as um, in terms of subtopics of what we're going to be covering today, First of all, we're going to be looking at the definition of a pest crop, a pest. Next one, we're going to be talking about types of pests. We are also going to be looking at the classification of insect pests. Now, insect pest is also a type of pest. We're also going to be looking at the effects or economic importance of insect pests. Now, when we're talking about economic importance, it includes both the positive side and also the negative effect, or you can say advantages and disadvantages. It covers everything, both advantages and disadvantages, covers um, economic importance. It's not only the advantages, but also the disadvantages. And lastly, we will be exploring the ways we can control the spread of insect pests, or we're also going to be looking at the ways of preventing insect pests. Now, also, by the end of this class, we we're going to be having our specific objective. The specific objective is aimed at um, uh, um, asking you questions, or, or you should be able to answer some of these questions at the end of this class. Now, if you're able to answer these questions, it simply means you have actually comprehended or understood the topic. Now, first one is that you should be able, at the end of this topic, to define what a pest is is what a pest is and number two you should be able to mention the types of pests number three you should be able to tell the types of insect pests we have different types of insect pests and then number four you should be able to mention the effects of insect pests and then five you should be able to explain some of the ways we can control insect pests or some of the ways of preventing insect pests. Now, if you are ready for this, let's begin with the first one, which has to do with definition of
pest. Now, what is pest? Now, this brings me, or uh, uh, actually uh, makes me to remember um, a scene that once happened. I was actually asking um, some students um, this particular question of the definition of a pest. And one of the students stood up and said, pointed at a fellow um, student and said, he is the pest. And uh, everybody laughed in class. And, but the truth is, can man be a pest? Now, let's look at the definition of a pest. A pest is any organism that causes damage to crop plants. Now, as it relates, please note, as it relates to pest of crops. So in other words, if we're talking about pests, pests are organisms that causes damages to not only crop plants, they are both to crop plants and also to animals. So any organism that causes damage to both plants and also animals is referred to as a pest. So somehow that student was correct. <laughs> Probably the other student that was causing a lot of damage to his educational lifestyle. And, um, but let's look at it in terms of pest of crops. So any pest, or a pest rather, is any organism that can cause damage to crops or to plants. Now we have a whole lot of them. But before we go into them, we're going to look at some of the types of um, um, pests. Now we have several types. One include insects. Insects are all, in fact, they are the major uh, examples of the types of pests. Insects. We have so many examples. We have the um, we have the ants. We have the, the 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 beetles. We have the ladybugs. We have the cockroach. We have the fleas. We have the um, uh, uh, mosquitoes. We have the termites. We have um, grasshoppers. We have the locust. We have even uh, 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 um, the larva of um, butterfly. And so many of these in insects are referred to as what? Insect pest. Now, apart from uh, uh, insect as a type of uh, pest, we also have birds. Birds also go around feeding from um, plants and damaging crops. They damage crops a lot. Most seed beds and uh, so on, they go around damaging crops by feeding on the, the fruits, feeding on um, so many other things from the crops. In so doing, they end up damaging the plant or the crop. And then number three is rodents. Rodents that are mostly found in farmlands. They go ar around eating and feeding on these crops. We also have other types of, um, in, uh, of pests. We have monkeys, which are also very good in damaging crops, feeding on their, uh, their fruits, their produce, and so on. And then we also have man. So man can also be an example of a pest. Okay, and then we also have nematodes. Now, what are actually nematodes? Nematodes are, are, are called um, um, roundworms. Okay, nematoda, they are roundworms. Examples include, in terms of the ones that are pests or parasites to man, we have the Ascaris lumbricoid, we have um, 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 the roundworm, the guinea worms, and so on. They have several examples of nematodes, but there are some nematodes that act as pests toward plants. And we're going to be looking at some of their effects. But before we continue with this, let's take a look at types of insect pests. Types of insect pests. Now, we have several types of insect pests. Remember, we said that insects are also types of pests. Now, insect pests can be classified into several types based on their mode of feeding. Based on their mode of feeding. Now, when we're talking about based, whenever we're talking about the mode of feeding, we, we, we narrow our discussion to their mouth parts and the function of these mouth parts because the mouth parts are actually what are involved in feeding their mouth parts. Now, the first one on the list 
is biting and chewing insects biting and chewing insects now if you take a look at the mouth part of biting and chewing insects they have what we call mandibles they have maxillae they have labium labrum now the function of the mandibles and the maxillae is for actually chewing and biting of food while the labrum and the labium helps to prevent the food from falling off the mouth we also have what we call the maxillary pulp the maxillary pulp helps in sensitivity, okay? It, it, it actually helps the, the insect to be sensitive to touch, to be sensitive to what they want to eat or feed from, okay? So these are some of the uh, mouth parts that makes this particular insect to be called biting and chewing insect pest. Now, there are several examples of a biting and chewing insect pest. An example is grasshopper. That's a major example. Grasshopper is an ex full, a, a good example of biting and chewing insect pest. We also have termites, we have locusts, we have beetles, and so many other examples. We have the praying mantids, but uh, we also have so many examples. These um, 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 insects can be classified as biting and chewing insect pest. Number two is the piercing and sucking insect pest. Piercing and sucking insect pest. Like we said about the biting and chewing insect pest, we said they have a, a kind of modified mouth parts, which is mandibles and maxillae. In terms of piercing and sucking, they have what we call stylets. Now these stylets are sharp and pointy uh, they can penetrate or pierce through um, tissues of the of, of crops and plants and then they also have different um, modifications of proboscis for sucking whatever they want to suck out from the plant now examples of um, pests or insects rather that are can be classified as piercing and sucking insect pests includes the aphid now the aphid is one insect that that, 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 that that serves as a pest on legumes, okay? It is a legume pest, that is the aphids. We also have the cotton stena. The cotton stena is also an insect that is a pest to um, the crop called cotton. We also have the mealybug, okay, the mealybug. Now, the mealybug affects or serves as a pest to cassava. We also have several examples like the white flies and so on. These are examples of piercing and sucking insect pests. Piercing and sucking insect pests. We also have other examples, uh, sorry, other types of insect pests, which is probably the last one we're going to be considering, and that is burrowing insect pests. Burrowing insect pests. Now, burrowing insect pests are actually insect pests that bore holes. They bore holes on grains, on seeds, okay, crops that are, are seed-like, okay? So they bore holes. Uh, you, 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 you ha we have examples like the bean beetle. We also have the stem burrower. The, bee, uh, the bee, be uh, bean beetle actually bores holes in beans. If you get a bean that is actually damaged or infected with pests, if you press it a little and probably try to crack it open, you will see these uh, bean beetles inside. And such kind of beans, they don't have a, a nutritional value. Uh, yes, nutritional value when eaten. Okay, they've been infected and uh, destroyed by these um, beetles. We also have the stem burrowers. Now, the stem burrowers affect cereals. Okay, cereals like rice, we have the maize and so on. Okay, they affect cereals. We also have the maize weevils. The maize weevils also affect maize and also we have the rice weevils. So both weevils and beetles as well as stem burrowers, they are all examples of burrowing insect pests. So they bore holes on plants or on crops. Now, the next thing we're going to be looking at in this topic is effects. 
Now, we're going to be looking at the effects of these uh, um, three categories of insect pests. We've talked about um, the biting and chewing. We've also looked at um, the piercing and choking, as well as the burrowing insect pest. Now, let's see their effects. What do they cause? We said they damage. That's the definition for insect pests, that they damage crops, okay? They damage crop plants. Now, let's see how they damage crop plants. Number one on the list is that insect pests destroys crop plants. They destroy crop plants. In fact, if you've seen a, a, a crop plant that is actually uh, um, affected by insects, uh, by pests, mostly from insects, you will not want to eat or feed from such. They are so battledly damaged, so damaged. So it ends up, in fact, pests, insect pests ends up destroying crop plants. Imagine a swarm of um, um, locusts on a farmland. They will end up destroying that particular farmland, okay? Now, number two is the, 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 the reduction in the viability of stored produce. Now, most of these plants, uh, or most of these crops, when they are stored, when uh, um, pests or insects invade this stored produce, they tend to reduce the viability. Uh, the, 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 uh, how will I put it? The quality, probably, the quality of these produce. They don't become so attractive. They are not attractive. They are not good. You see them looking spoiled. You see them looking uh, uh, like something you, you shouldn't even dare. Okay, so um, uh, they actually, one of the, uh, the effects of pests is that they reduce the viability, the quality, or if you can call it the, 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 the aliveness, okay, of these stored produce. And then also number three, we talked about cost of production. They increase cost of production. Remember when we started, we made mention of cost of production and how cost of production is being affected by the presence of pests and as well as diseases. Yes, they affect cost of production. And how do they affect it? They increase it. Because when a farmer notices um, crops, or sorry, when a farmer notices pests or mostly insects in his farm, the farmer will spend much money much money to control these insects buying of chemicals building of fences um, uh, uh, so many other things that the farmer will put in place so as to uh, enable the farmer control um, the spread of these or the effect of these pests on crop plants of course it is affecting the, the economy of the farmer okay so the farmer will spend more and spending more is actually the cost of production. The cost of producing these uh, um, crops is going to be on the high side because the farmer is spending more to eradicate most of these insect pests. Okay, so it will increase the cost of production. Number four, they render crops unattractive and unmarketable the crops are unattractive. Have you seen a crop uh, that is being affected or infected by pests? They don't look palatable at all. They don't look pleasurable. You, 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 you won't want to buy it. Okay, that's why we say it, they, they, they are unmarketable. You can't, as a farmer, the farmer will not be confident enough to sell these produce, will not be confident enough to sell these crops in the market. So they render crops unattractive, they render crops unmarketable. Remember I also told you that these, para these pests, they also aid the transmission of diseases. They aid the transmission of what? Diseases. And they reduce the viability of these crops. And then number five, very important, they reduce the profit of the farmer. So the farmer spends much, spends much in producing these crops and yet gets little out of it. Why? Because most the money he's putting in 
to, to, to sort of like control this pest is high. And then when it goes to the market, this pest has already rendered most of um, the crops <laughs> unmarketable, unattractive. So when it goes to the market, instead of selling it the, 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 the uh, way he should have sold it, he is going to bring down the price in order to get rid of the, those products and sell it off in the market. So it affects the profit of the farmer. And how does it affect the profit? It reduces the profit of the farmer. So the farmer ends up in a loss, in a loss because of the activities of this pest. And then number six, they reduce crop yield. So in other words, if the farmer is expecting probably, um, let's say, a thousand um, heads of corn, okay, from the farmland, based on the, the activities of this pest, the farmer might be getting probably 400 or 500, which is actually, uh, it is actually reduced. Drastical reduction of crop yield. It reduces crop yield. And then number seven is that they cause the death of crops. They bring about the death of crops. So pests and pests, pests actually, the activities of pests in farmlands are so disastrous. They are so disastrous. They affect agriculture negatively. They affect agriculture negatively. Now, it is not just enough knowing the effects. Now, how do we control these things? It's not just enough identifying the problems. We've identified that the problem is the pest. We've seen the effects of this pest. Now, how do we control? How do we prevent this from happening? Now, we're looking at control. Now, for me, one of the best ways we can control pest is education. And that's what you're getting today, education. Once you are educated on the effects of this pest, when you are educated on the causes sorry, or the effects of this pest on crops, you are educated on the causes of, of, of why your farms or your farm produce are not doing well, why the crops are not yielding well, why your, your income actually as a farmer is reducing drastically, you're not making any profit. Once you identify this, these things and now have a knowledge of how to control it, it becomes easier for you to control it okay so education is actually important now the reason why I said education is actually important sometimes it is actually the farmer that promotes it remember if you go back to one of our video when we talked about effects of farming activity different farm types of farming activities on um, on the ecosystem on agricultural products you will discover something I said there I said like for uh, one of the um, um, farming activities or practices like monocropping we said it encourages it encourages it brings about an increase great increase in the population of pests so the farmer can one of the ways the farmer can do this based on education is not to adopt some certain pra farming practices you don't adopt some certain practices in your farmland this is education so one important way of controlling pests is educating the farmers educating the farmers or educating the public okay number two is physical control physical control now what is actually physical control it involves the physical removal of pests through the following ways. So we can remove pests through the following ways. One of them is hand picking, but that is so monotonous. It is so boring. In fact, it, it, is, it, it is time consuming, all right? It will take you time to do that all. In fact, it will not be effective. Uh, in other words, for me, I, I feel hand picking is not an effective way of controlling pests. So imagine you going through your whole farmland, a vast farmland, and picking pests with your hands. So hand picking it is actually a way of also controlling pests. Another way of controlling pests is setting of traps, mostly as it regards what we remember. What we are saying, looking at here is control of pests, not insects. Control of pests. 
For instance, we have the rodents. The rodents can be controlled using setting of traps. We can also use of scarecrows. Scarecrows, some animals like the monkeys, when they see the scarecrow, they think it is a human that is there in the farmland and this might scare them away and they decide to leave the farmland alone. We also have a fencing of the farm with wire nets. We also have shooting down rodents and even birds that come to feed or destroy your crop plants. So these are what we call physical control, physical control, removing, physically removing this pest from your farmland, okay? Now, the second way we can control pest is chemical control, chemical control. Now, what is actually chemical control? It is actually the use of chemicals the use of chemicals. We have several types of chemicals that can be used to control pests. One of them is pesticides. Now, pesticides are used to control pests. We have insecticides, which is used to control insects. We have rodenticides used for controlling rodents. We have the avicides, which is used for controlling birds. And we have the nematicides, which is used for controlling nematodes. So these are ways we can control the spread or the increase in the population of pests in our farmland, and that is chemical control. And in fact, it is widely used today, chemical control. But it has its own negative effect. If applied in excess, if applied in excess, it destroys the crops. It also affects soil organisms and also can be washed off to uh, water bodies during rainy seasons and it can cause water pollution. But applying it in the, correct, or in the right proportion or correct proportion, it, it has a, a, a positive effect. It has a positive effect. The third one we're going to be looking at is um, cultural control. Cultural control. Now remember I said that one of the best ways we can control pest is actually education. Now this is where education comes into play. Now cultural control involves the use of good farming practices or activities to prevent and control pests in a farmland. That means you are educating the farmer on good farming practices. You know some persons uh, adopt certain farming practices because of um, poverty, all right? Like, for instance, uh, a farmer wants to um, uh, cultivate a particular piece of land uh, and the farmer is applying the system of bush burning. Now, that is also a very negative uh, a, a way of clearing um, your piece of land in order for you to cultivate it, okay? And the reason is simple. The cost of um, clearing it using um, uh, tractors or employing laborers and all that is high compared to bush burning. Okay, so sometimes poverty is most times the reason why um, um, bad farming practices are being adopted. All right, but please take note there are also good and better farming practices that don't cost much. So when the farmer is sensitized or actually um, educated and or this awareness is being created through several medias, which can be a social media and all the other medias to, through which information or can be communicated. And um, these can help the farmer put in uh, good methods or measures in order to control pests. Now, how do we control pests culturally? One of them is practicing crop rotation. Crop rotation is one of the ways to reduce the effects of pests in your farmland. Practicing of crop rotation. Another one is use of pest-resistant pest crops. There are some crops that are resistant to some pests. Planting and using those crops helps to control the spread of these pests. And then number three way we can also apply cultural control is proper weeding and sanitation. Some persons don't want to weed around their, their, their farmlands and so on. They leave the farmlands to go follow. And they, this can also attract most insects or most pests. Okay, so proper weeding or sanitation and also timely planting and harvesting of crops timely planting and harvesting of crops. These are also ways we can control 
test culturally. And then finally, number four is biological control. Biological control. Now, what is biological control? It simply involves the introduction of natural enemies of pests in order to keep the pest population under control. Now, it, it, it simply means um, bringing in enemies, and these enemies of this pest can be mostly predators, mostly when you're looking at insects. For instance, we have caterpillar. We can bring in um, a predator of caterpillar into the scene or into the farmlands where, where you have um, enough caterpillars, you just introduce these um, um, pre uh, predators or these natural enemies. And please ensure that these natural enemies don't feed on your crops. Let it be natural enemies that don't feed on crops. They feed mainly on those insect pests. So introduction of these natural enemies helps to put a check on the um, 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 population of these pests. So that is what we call biological control. So this is where we call it a wrap up on this particular class. Now that before we go, let's take a look at some few questions um, using the exam guide app. Okay, just few questions. Look at these questions here. We have just four questions. Now, which of the following organisms represented a notable agricultural pest? Notable agricultural pest. Now, if you look so closely to the first one, Roman figure one, that is a grasshopper or probably a locust. Roman figure two is probably a cockroach. Roman figure three looks like um, um, the larva stage of a mosquito. Okay, and then uh, you can see that it is in the water. And then Roman figure four is a caterpillar. Now, from what we have here as regards mostly insect pests. Now, um, 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 the larva of a mosquito is not an insect pest. It's not even a pest. It doesn't destroy crops. It is actually laid uh, by mosquitoes in stagnant waters. And they, they, are, they are mainly aquatic, okay? So they don't have any dealings with crops. And then we also have um, um, uh, the cockroach. The cockroach is mainly a household pest, not a farm pest, not a crop pest, but a household pest. And then we have Roman figure one and four, which is mainly they are crop what pest. So the correct answer is B, option B, which is crop pest. So look at question two very quickly. They said an economic importance of the organism represented by four, that's Roman figure four, is that, remember I told you economic importance has to do with both positive and negative effects, all right? Not just only positive effect. Now look at question A, or option A rather, it transmits waterborne diseases to humans. Now, it cannot because um, the caterpillar is not found in water, so it's not transmitting waterborne diseases. B, option B says it is destructive to farm crops, yes. Option C says it, its feces pollutes drinking water. It is not also found in water, so its feces will not be polluting drinking water. And then option D says it helps in the control of mosquito larva. Now the caterpillar, which is Roman figure four, don't feed on mosquito larva. And mosquito larva, like I said before, is not a crop pest. So the one that actually feeds as an economic importance of this organism, which is the caterpillar, is actually option B. So it is destructive to farm crops. You see them eating up the leaves of farm crops. And then um, question three, look at that structure. That is the head of a, uh, of a grasshopper. Now they said the maxillary pulp maxillary pulp is labeled where now that is number roman figure four that is the maxillary pulp remember i told you it is for sensitivity and detection it helps to detect food and all they are sensitive to food and all that through touching okay through touching and that's the maxillary pulp 
and then we'll have the last one, which is question number four, the economic importance of the lava, of the lava. It's supposed to be the lava of a butterfly, which is caterpillar, is that it what? We've just seen what the caterpillar does. A, is it, it feeds on the leaves of the crops. B, it resembles the plant on which it lives. C, it develops into a moth. And D, it's eaten by birds. That's not its effect or economic importance. The correct one is that it feeds on the leaves of crops. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using your exam guide app. The app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can also learn particular topics of interest with different modes like study mode, uh, mock mode, and even practice mode. It, is also, it also has other features that makes learning very fun. Now, it is a must for all serious students. Download from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. See you in the next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels, hit the notific notification bell, and share the videos to your loved ones and friends that will benefit from it. Bye for now.